laser pointer on the inside. So now instead of having the, the laser line across the middle on the inside of the tire, it has a dot. It's going to say, put the weight right here. It ain't shitting. Don't move it a half inch, three quarters of an inch away from that dot. Put it right there. You're also going to get single weight solutions from time to time. That smart weight touch would give you one from time to time, but you're going to see it more on this baluster, especially on passenger cars. You're not going to see it a lot on these. These are going to require a little more weight just because of what they are. But on that vet, you bet your ass you're going to see a single weight solution. So this is the profile of the ram y'all are all used to looking at. We've got flip weights out here. We've got tank weights here. It'll move one of these to right here, and it'll fit to you on the screen. Hey, I found a single weight solution. Do you want to do that, or do you want to go back to the dual weight? And you make the decision. Okay, guys, the single weight solution is usually going to be about an ounce to an ounce and a quarter less than the dual weight solution. Here, we're not giving a shit about using the extra weights. Hide them behind the spokes for your customers. I personally, yeah, unless that single weight solution is hid behind the spoke, I'm not going to do it. It's not here. I'm going to let it hide them behind the spokes so your customers can't see that. Everybody had agrees with that? Yeah. You better be taking it, yes, please. Okay. <coughs> now, let's talk about straight track. You may know what straight track is. I know a couple of you said you've used road force balancer. Was it one of the original road forces or do we have straight track? No? Nobody used straight track? Okay. Here's the part where when we check the alignment on that car and it doesn't need one, and we put it over here and run road force with straight track. Now we can really decide, let the machine do the diagnostics and decide whether it's tires that's our problem. Okay? Does everybody remember tire stack? We talked about that on the smart way. Shake your head no if you don't. Okay, thank you. I'll leave one and I'm going to start talking about it. Tire stack, when you bounce the first tire, it's going to put it on the rear. Left or right, rear, every time. Okay? When you bounce the second tire, it's still going to put that second tire on the rear every time. Why? Because it doesn't have a minimum of three tires to decide which ones have the most propensity for vibration. Which ones do you think are going to have the most propensity for vibration? Those that have the most weight on I don't care if it's a quarter ounce on this one and a half ounce on this one, three quarters of an ounce on the next one, it's going to take that three quarter of an ounce tire and put it on the rear every time. Okay? I know y'all probably don't do a lot of rotations in here on them, but I get a lot of stories that go, what if it puts the tires back in the same spot? Guys, that's never going to happen. Why? Because which tires do the most work on a Corvette? Assuming they drive it, not normally. Assuming they don't burn the tires off over here time they start to start and stop. If they just putter around with it, if it's their midlife crisis, if we're not hot lighting up down the road, which tires do the most work? Front tires, right? They're doing all the turning. All the camera roll. So those tires are going to what? They're going to wear more rubber off. When it comes time for rotation, I promise you those are not going to go back on the front. They're going to go to the rear because they're going to take more weight than the rear tires. Okay. Now, on some of your Corvettes, you've got different sizes in front of there, right? So obviously they're not going to go to the rear. The camera's going to recognize that. Okay. Now, you're not going to use tire stack on those vehicles that have different sizes front and rear. You're just not going to do it. I will say this, don't be that guy that does, if you're doing a four, don't be that guy that does two and he goes to lunch. Because one of your cohorts is going to come in here with a set of tires and balance them, and they're going to be in your tire stack, and there's not a damn thing I can do about it. Go ahead and get all four done before you go to lunch, get them marked. Guys, I will say this, don't mark them out here. I have watched the, some of the young men at Discount Tire put ones and twos and threes on the outside of their customers, $1,200 set of tires, and not wipe it off. Or not even, or make an attempt with the grease pencil that they happen to pick up. So it's going to come off real easy. Easy, easy. But either put the mark on the tread or on the inside of it when it tells you where it wants. Okay? Obviously, you've got your car right here, so it's not going to be hard for you to go roll right where they want to, right where they need to be when you get finished and look at the tire track and see which one does good. Okay? Okay. Now, excuse me, you clear the tire stack with your tools, reset. Yes, tire stack will be clear at that point. If you continue to balance tires, every fifth tire will be number one in the stack again. 
you know, we had a red, you know, kind of give a red dot, a red overlay over this with an exclamation point. In. Guys, don't call me and go, there's something wrong with the That just means somebody had to clear the tires back. That's all that means. Okay? Tools reset, yes, clear that back out. Don't get me wrong. I do not mind driving out here for $145 to see my smile and face in 15 minutes to walk in here and go, whoop, whoop, here's your envelope. I don't mind. So let's, let's, let's don't do that. That happens once before people start getting asked you that, right? Okay. Now, how do we comb a tire? Everybody understands comb, right? How do we comb? How do we comb? Inside or outside? Inside and inside? inside? You don't do tires inside? Everybody says inside all the way around? Okay. I'm good with that. That's the way I prefer to do it. Because when you comb them from the outside, especially with uh, Chrysler products, Chrysler wheels from the factory are what? Eighty, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Eighty percent of their wheels are laminated wheels. Therefore, when I take this precision cut tool, which is hardened steel, and force it against that aluminum, that that uh, laminated wheel on the outside, and crank it down as tight as I can get it, I cut that laminate. We don't know what happens here. 15, 20,000 miles down the road when that customer comes in and the wheel's delaminated, holy shit. If you need your aftermarket rims, the laminates. Cone them from the back side. Now, they did buy y'all. This ain't no yet. You may ever use one of these. Some of you yes, some of you no. Okay. You've got three different sets of pins, depending on the lug bore size and length, to put in there. Guys, this is an awesome tool to use, and we've actually redesigned it. If you use one of the old ones, I apologize. <laughs> Those were, man, they were awesome when they were brand new. And about three days later, they weren't. Because <clears throat> they get some dust and dirt between those two plates in there. And you move it with your hand. And then you want to spray some grease in there. And then the grease attracted more dirt. Stuff that wouldn't move at all. This is a whole different ball game. Okay. So now with the numbers on that, while I was there talking, I had something everybody look at. There's numbers. There's four lug, five lug, six lug, and eight lug. Now it's hard to figure out where those pins go. Put them on, to put them in the lug board. Now obviously we're adjusting in and out to fit the lug board. Preferably take that thing and get it somewhere close, figure out which pins you need before we put it up here on the balance. Okay? Now, with that, what did I do with the other oh, There it is. Same deal with this balancer. When this spindle is dry, now you're really going to know it. When there's no grease or lubrication left on this spindle, when you run road force on a, on a tire, when that drum comes down, it can come down with up to 1,200 pounds of force. Do not stick your hand in there. <laughs> I don't know how you would get your hand in there, but don't try, okay? When that road force drum comes down, if your spindle is dry, what happens is the butterfly shakes loose, the butterfly starts spinning off because you didn't realize what was happening, all you heard was boom! Road force come down, butterfly spin off, and the next thing you know, wheel moves off the end, hood, hood comes up, wheel hits the ground, it goes right into the side of your $100,000 car. Let's keep the spindle lubricated. Everybody know how to clean the spindle? Somebody shake your head no. Thank you. Tools, clean threads. Do not. Take your rag and do this, try to clean this spindle. <laughs> now, some of you know why, right? Those of you that don't know why, because there's going to be a shit ton of aluminum shards in these threads from you sliding wheels in and out of this, and it's just slivers of metal, is all it is. This spindle can turn up to 300 RPM during the thread the cleaning process. It doesn't, it's fairly slow, but if you do this, it's going to take those metal shards and run them through that rag into the palm of your hand. And it's not going to apologize. In fact, I think they giggle when they do it. So take the edge of the rag, put it in the edge, the first thread, and walk it all the way out. Sometimes you're going to have to go through that twice, move over to get all the crap out of there. You're going to have a nice little pile of black and silver aluminum shards right here on the edge of this rack. Okay? After you do that, what have I done? I've taken all the lubrication off this spindle with this rag, right? So now what do I need to do? 
And then you go back over here to our wait a second. It's thick enough and sticky as hell on that. Anyway, this is what we can use. Typically gear on. Okay? Very indifferential. It's it's sticky enough to put on that. This is the one time in your life where lubrication causes friction. This is hardened steel. The threads inside of this are hardened steel. Hardened steel against hardened steel. If you tighten it down as tight as you can get it and use a sledgehammer to tighten it down, how, how much pressure does it take to bust it loose? Very little. Right? I mean, you just tap it and it comes loose because there's, there's nothing there to hold it together. That's why we lubricate the spindle. Does that make sense? Okay. So who's going to be the guy that cleans the spindle? All of us. <laughs> just one guy. Put his hand up. Okay, so you're the only one that's going to clean the spindle. Just know the rest of you, you're going to be dead inside of your car when the wheel comes off. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you're going to know when that happens. You can hear the, that butterfly spinning off the end. If you, any of you ever, ever had it happen to you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You can hear the, the butterfly rattle on the end of that. And we're going to reach over here and step on the spindle stop. I'm going to stomp on it. There's a, a little micro switch inside here. I even on the other one. It's got a little tang on it. It's about as long as my finger. It's less than a quarter of an inch wide and right over a millimeter thick. And it sits right inside the rod and runs up here. And when you go and step on it every time, it bounces it around, it bounces it around. And eventually, the little plastic micro switch that is this long and that thick, that has two little buttons on it that that tang is, is contacting to make a big noise, you bend it or break it or maim it or do something to it, and then I get to come out and fix it. Again, get after it if you want to. But this is meant to be eased down on, not stomped on. The only time we want to stomp on it is if we have that problem where our road force drum has come down, nobody has cleaned our spindle, it's dry as a bone and the wheel wants to come off. Please feel free to stomp on it and stop that spindle. Raise that hood at one time before it runs into the side of our thousand dollar car. Okay? Everybody with me? Go. All right. Take it. Let's see what else. Do what he's talking about. Okay. Uh, we got anybody here that is more comfortable with Spanish than English? No? Okay. I, I turned it on anyway. If you want if you want it in Spanish, all you gotta do is hit the hit the Spanish flag and it changes everything to Spanish. Apparently there is no word in Spanish for centering check. Because it says centering check in English. Thanks, bro. Uh, but if anybody prefers it, there it is. Very easy to get to. There's actually 27 different languages on there we can change it to. Please don't be that guy that figures out how to get in there and change the damn language or stuff that nobody can read. Uh, okay. Uh, cool. Okay. Let's talk. We talked about centering check on the smart white bouncer. Does everybody know what centering check is? Somebody didn't shake your head no. Thank you. Okay, what a center check is, anybody done a brake job? Yes, everybody's done a brake job, right? What's the last thing you do before you pull the rotor off the hub? What's the last thing you should do before you pull the rotor off the hub? Come on, some of you remember your shop teachers. Well, yeah, okay, okay, you got me. Take the keeper or the set screw out and pull the rotor off. What should be the next thing you do when you bust that thing loose from that hub? Make it with sledgehammer, make it loose, okay? The next thing that you should do, I'm going to go ahead and skip to it. You should have been taught to take a punch, take a hammer, think, and cut it, and make a mark on the inside of that rotor. Not where you're going to cut it, but just inside of what you're going to cut off, and then mark one of the studs. Why? So you can put it back in its spot and prevent what? Mm, yeah, vibration, yes. Anybody ever heard of a thing called lateral run out? Yeah. Has any of you, have any of you ever watched a vehicle on TV, watched a vehicle go down the assembly line in a GM plant? What puts the rotors on the hook? Big robot, right? Reaches over to the hub, picks it up, goes to the car, and does this. Pulls it off, rotates it, pulls it off, rotates it the third time. Puts it back on and then it goes one to one of the three spots and zips the keeper off. What was it looking for? The minimum amount of lateral run out. That hub is not perfect. 
The hood is not designed to be perfect. GM doesn't give a shit if that light, if that hood is perfect on that Z06 Corvette. They don't care. Why? Because the machine is going to put the rotors on with the least amount of run out in it to start with. Is the inside of that is the inside of the hat of the rotor perfect? No, it's not. Why is this goofy fucker talking about brake jobs while we're talking about balancing tires? Hub, rotor. You with me? If we don't get that rotor on here square, I can't balance it properly. I might get close, but I can't do it right. How many of you ever balance a tire when you drop the hood and you actually stood there and watched and you see that tire doing this? And you knew what the deal was. Let me throw the hood up, bend it with my knees stop, right? Burn a hole through your pants, don't do that. I have a permanent strawberry right there on my knee from doing that. <coughs> At that point, what we're going to do is we're going to do a centering check. You would hit centering check. It's going to tell you to move, rotate the rim around to the valve core at 12 o'clock. Drop the hood, hit start. It would spin up. Our initial road course balancers would spin up, raise the hood, tell you to loosen the butterfly, reach in and grab the collet with your hand. So I would back the butterfly off until I could get my hand down in here, grab the collet with my fingers, Grab the tire and either rotate the collet 90 degrees and the tire 90 degrees. Personally, I went, why just rotate the tire 180? Same with that. Rotate the tire 180 degrees, crank it back down, rotate it back, the valve stem back to 12 o'clock, fill it where it is, drop the hood, spins up, and then it would come up and the, this rim would come up and face you and it would either be red or green. Then, if it was red, you went back and you recentered it. If it was green, our original road force, you dropped the hood again and spun it, and then it gave you your weights. So we dropped the hood three times to do a centering check. Guys, especially knowing that odds are good, we're going to get to break this thing down and take it back over here. Hunter said, hey, let's go ahead and do the math. Let's make the assumption that the technician knows what he's doing, he or she is doing, when we're spinning that tire, and let's make the assumption that it is on there square and it's going to be green, and let's go ahead and do the calculations and hold the weights in the background until we figure out if it's green or red. Now, let's move forward to this machine. It does it for you. Will you drop the hood on this one? It's going to spin. Yes, I'm going to air it. Now it's going to spin. It's going to tell me it's got a loose wing nut. Oh, my goodness. How does it know? It doesn't feel any weight on that spindle on the lateral force center. Okay? But what's going to happen is, oh, there it goes now. So we drop it, we spot it one time. When the cameras come on and the lasers come in and it profiles the wheel, the other thing you'll notice is it will give you a fairly close picture and resemblance. Instead of that being a five spoke, it'd be a 10 like this. It's kind of neat that the camera profile is so close. But it's also doing the centering check. It will come up and give you a similar error, possible centering check required, or possible wheel slippage. How would it know if the wheel slipped? What do you think? You saw, I thought you. You saw, you were adjusting yourself. <laughs> no? It sees that rim, it knows how fast that the spindle is spinning, and it sees how fast. That rim is spinning, and if the speed doesn't match, it's, hang on, put the name right. Okay? Because it's counting those spokes as they go by in order to give it that profile picture. Okay? Now, with that said, once it gives you the profile picture, it's going to give you the weights. Single weight, double weight, whatever the case may be. You no longer have to remember whether you're using clip weights or tape weights. It's going to profile that rim, and it's going to say, hey, this ain't got a lip on it. We're using tape weights. Let's put them on the impact. This machine basically does all the work for you. It does everything but puts the weights on, okay? How many of you have balanced the tire, didn't take the weights off intentionally just to see if it would balance out? Okay, guys, everybody's done that. How often does it work? One in a thousand. Okay, so, but the problem is we forget that we left them on there and we start adding weight. And then we go, oh shit, 
Hey, that's fine. That's a chase of weights. No, it's not chase of weights. You left the weights on it to start with, and then it added more weight, and then it added more weight because it's it's seeing weights all over the place. Especially now that I've got cameras in there, it will see that weight go by and go, what? And it'll give you some type of an error, or it'll ask you to put some weight directly across from it. Okay? Strip the weights off before you start. Guys, it, it is not worth your time to try to hit that one in a thousand tire that balances out. <coughs> okay? The dot, again, is going to, and I'm gonna, we're going to go through one here in a second. But there'll be a little red dot that comes from right up in here and shows right here is where I want the weight. Again, it's not kidding. What is the minimum amount of weight that we're going to put on the tire? Or around, right? One chicken. In the middle, where the dot is, in the middle, as close as you can get it. This way, okay? The reason they've done that is when we had that laser, the long laser across it, what was in the way when you went to put your weights in? Your hand. Yeah. Now the laser points over the top of it and you can manipulate your hand around to get to where that laser is right where it needs to be. You can put that weight on there, okay? Guys, if you move it a half inch off one way or the other, when you drop that hood and spin it, it's going to ask you for more weight. I promise you. It is that, this machine is that particular, which is kind of cool. Because now we know that we're taking that hundred thousand dollar car and we're bouncing the wheels, we're running road course and straight track. We know which direction it's going to go. If we let go of the steering wheel, the line is straight. Straight track isn't right. We know which direction that car would pull, so we're going to put the tires on the other side and make it go straight. And I can do it with a half ounce or quarter ounce of weight or less. Therefore, my customer doesn't see. And I know y'all have all seen this. <laughs> no, let me get two more <laughs> and put them on there. There is nothing pissing me off worse than to see, and I don't necessarily care about if it's on a high performance car, but there's nothing pissing me off worse than to see a nice set of wheels and a high dollar set of tires on it, and you can see 14 ounces of weight stuck behind it. It happens, we're not going to name this out tire, but it happens. Okay? Because they refuse to use this product. Okay? Any questions about this so far? And that's that's kind of like breaking from a fire hydrant. I know, right up front. But anybody got any questions? Anything that you can think of? You've run into miles and tires over the years. You went, hey, I, I want to ask the guy that at some point. Now. Now's the time. Nothing? Okay. So I would like one of you, probably you since you've been here the longest ever. Yes, you have. As long as I've been here. Here, let's chuck this up and put it on there. <laughs> oh, what? No? Okay. There's a tire guy right there. Uh, who's, who's the tire guy? I got a picture of him. Who's the tire guy? Come here, tire guy. Johnny, what's up there, Johnny? 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 Johnny, what's up there, because you can't possibly hurt your back lifting a tire if the wheel lift is the one lifting it. Okay, everybody with me on that? Where did the? Where'd it go? Did it make it around? My plane's Donnie got oh. it. Right there. Ah! The tire Sorry, guy. got it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guy. Nope, that's a six, and I have got it with that. So we're going to take. <coughs> Put my glasses on to be able to see to do this. This is the only thing about the new one. They're a little stiff and loose. Okay, there is a home position on this. Did everybody see that where there was no numbers? That's home. That one, you're not going to take off. If I'm doing a six lug, how many fingers am I going to use? Three. Look at that lug pattern and tell me how many fingers I'm going to use. Keep looking at it because I can see if you get this loose. 
<laughs> there you go. I already pulled. It's kind of loose. Is this is the type of wheels y'all do most of the time? Six lug. So once we get this set, other people have to cooperate, dude. They got to be part of it. Can't do everything right, champ. Yeah. <laughs> I go there. Take it right off. I'll take it. Six left tire. What's happening? Six. Three. Three. Not four. We're going to use three. Okay. If you notice when this came around, there were only two sixes on it, and then the home position. So we're only going to use three. We're going to decide before we start which peg, which pin we're going to use. I've already kind of cheated and put the right pegs on it to start with. Okay, how much pressure do I need to put on this wing nut when I put it on there? All over. Beating with a sledgehammer? Yep. <laughs> Who is the lightest guy in here? Who weighs just barely over 100 pounds? Sam. 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 Oh. <laughs> Sam. Yeah. He's over there? Okay. Yeah, there he is, right there. Buck 10? Yep. Maybe? If we're lucky? Buck 20? <laughs> The eight, one, two, I saw the old brother. Okay, that guy can put the correct amount of pressure on this, no problem. So that guy, that guy, and that guy, you don't have to have a dead blow hammer in your pocket. Go. Am I balancing this? No, everybody agree? No, no, no? Check your head, yes. It's on the spindle. If it's on the spindle, I'm balancing it, okay? This is why, I, and I, again, I make a good living at discount tire because I go in and replace these and these and these all the time. What do you think that bolt and that handle weighs? About two, three ounces? So if this has been gravity tested, everybody with me on gravity testing, enough that we break that two ounce handle completely off of there, and then we get frustrated because it's all maimed and we take the whole thing off there and we leave a bald end on this end of the butterfly, and then the knob and the bolt on this end and crank it down, guess where it's going to ask me to put weight the first time? He didn't grease it, did he? He didn't grease it? Oh, this is a perfect example of the tire coming off. <laughs> it's going to hit Chris. <laughs> if that handle's missing. The first time I drop the hood, I guarantee you it's going to ask you for three ounces of weight plus whatever else it needs right where that broken handle and, and bolt are missing. And then I'm going to drop the hood the second time and guess what it's going to do. First time it balanced the butterfly. Second time it's balancing the rim. And then you call me saying, this time bitch is taking weight. And I come out and the handle's broke or missing or made or been beat on with the rubber off of this. <laughs> this is not the butterfly time. But it happens. These are not butterfly tighteners. This one is not a butterfly tightener. Okay? These are precision cut instruments. If we use them for sledgehammers or manufacturing guy takes them and uses them on his press back there. They are no longer precision cut. That's a good idea. Okay? <laughs> they are not about seventy dollars a piece plus right. depending on which one you buy. But if we start nicking them and using them in the vise and the press and everything else, they will no longer be able to center in the bore of that rim. I am going to show you all a quick.
Apparently they have taken my videos off of here. Okay, so you don't get to watch the video. When we are centering this in the bore, I want the bore of that rim touching somewhere in the middle 50 to 60 percent of this side of the collet. There are two sides to these collets. Everybody realizes that. You're smart way, it's the same thing. So I want the inside of that bore, the edge of that rim, touching somewhere in the middle of 50 60 percent of this. If it's too big or too loose, go to the next collet or flip this one over and use this side. Okay? If it's a little over, it's going to come down and touch the back side. It won't work. The reason it won't work is the same reason. I know everybody likes the old pyramid style collets, the old con conical shaped ones. Everybody loves those, right? The problem with those is they would bottom out in the inside of that rim bore. So you have the bore itself and then the face plate of the inside of the bore, they would bottom out against that face, therefore allowing the rim to do this while it's spun because the collet was bottomed out on the inside. These won't bottom out, okay? They stay inside that rim bore, okay? Now, with that said, should, and again, y'all don't deal with it here, but discount tire and places like that, they need to clean the bore of that out. Y'all are most of the time doing new tires, new wheels and tires here, so you're not ever gonna have cow shit and rust and mud and everything else in the bore of that, of that wheel. If you do, clean it out before you start this because the tires, the wheel assembly is going to sit like this and we go back to the brake job, the rotor, right? Now let me figure out why it's not working like it's supposed to. Probably got the wrong, wrong finger. Back to the middle. Got the wrong finger. There we go. Now this will be fun. Because these were brand new, put them on here, and these little rubber o rings behind them are very easy when it's cold to pull them off of. If you draw a gravity test the wing nut and break the handles, what should we do? Make it weigh the same on both sides again. So if we break the handle, the plastic knob, take the bolt out of the other side, take the plastic knob off the other side, put the bolt back in, that way we weigh the same again on both sides. Okay? Make sense? These stickers, along with anything else that says Hunter Engineering on it, are cheap, fellas. Don't lose them. I can't get them one at a time. Have to buy the whole set of sticks. Again, I don't mind. Ours will be up front are going to. This is the only time I will tell you you are going to be able to beat on this equipment. <laughs> Notice I have the little rubber deal on. <laughs> With that said, how many of y'all have been in watching somebody bounce a set of tires? <clears throat> Music's blaring. Boom, 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 boom. What are we looking for? Bouncing the tire. Vibration, right? If the music is going boom, 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 and the music speaker is right here, you're facing the balancer right here, and it's vibrating the balancer, can I bounce the tire? No. Again, we're chasing a quarter of an ounce of weight, and we've got music blaring, bass vibrating the balance. However, if we don't have, which y'all don't have the big stereo system in here, but you got your earpods in here, you jam into the beat, so do this while it's spinning. You're introducing a little bit of vibration into the balancer, and again, we're chasing a quarter of an ounce of weight. So do that, okay? Your best bet is to put your thumbs in your pockets, Anytime the balance is spinning, don't touch it. In fact, I'm assuming the same guy that's going to be the cleaning guy is also going to be the. There. After I told you how easy this is to use, it's going to fight me. Okay, it's going to be the same guy. Let's calibrate the machine. How often should we calibrate it? 
I get to work on a lot of wheel lifts because guys use it to hold the wheel still when they're trying to hammer the butterfly down. Don't do that. You end up breaking it loose from the machine, wearing the bolts out, wearing all the bearings out, wearing the pins out, the wheel lift, and I get kind of big things. So, set it down. Going on the spindle stop. Wing nut is at about 1.30, 2 o'clock. Hold the wheel. That's it. That's all you need to do. You don't have to beat on it. You don't have to get the bubble to come in here. On it. You do not have to do that. Next step at this point is, I'm going to turn this off on this one. Lower the hood and don't touch the ballast. When calibrating the ballast, does everybody know how to calibrate it? Somebody say, shake your head no, please. Thank you. I will show you how. Okay. When calibrating it, there's a little message that comes up that says, do not touch ballast. It ain't shitting. You can literally stand here like this and lean on it, and your heartbeat will, the bouncer is going to pick it up, and it will start over the calibration process. And it'll sit there and do it over and over and over because you're leaning on the bouncer. It says don't touch it. Don't touch it. Okay. Half ounce, zero. See where it wants it? You want quick weight there? It says it does. That's actually got a little bit of a lip on it. You can put one on if you want to. We're probably not going to. So we're going to change it. There's your single weight solution. Okay? We don't want that. We hit toggle, and it'll go back to tape weight solution. So you have the option to switch between them. That is strange. Oh, I guess it does have enough lip in it. The machine thinks it, thinks it can accept the clip weight. Okay. I want, let's, in a little conga line, let everybody walk by here. See where this little red dot is so you can see what I'm talking about. Red line like you used to have and have to try to figure out how to get your hand in. I'm going to go tools, reset. Yes, we're going to run a road course. Actually, I'm going to run a road course with straight back this time. It is going to ask you every time did you check the air pressure in this tire? Because I think basically it's going to say, did you put this check the air pressure in it? Because I'm fixing to put 1,200 pounds of pressure on. You're going to hear the road force drum come down. <laughs> Doesn't like it. Okay. Okay. Why that didn't like it? Doesn't like these big miles on this thing. Hang on, let's see. Take straight back off. We may not be able to do straight back on Corvettes, absolutely. On again, on the big Jeep. Do, oh, oh, does that customer care? No. Wah, 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 wah. We can't get rid of the wah, 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 wah. There's no way. Okay. So we got no factory car limits. That's not a factory car tire. It shows 22 pounds of road force. It's in red. What they want to do, want to go to force match, it's going to pull up here and show you a little, two little gloves, show you where to mark the wheel, where to mark the tire. In this case, we are going to put a mark on the outside because if you put it on the back side, when it's on this tire changer, you can't see your marks because they're facing down. So just get your little grease, your little grease pencil, and just put you one little tick that you know you can get off there with the rag. One little tick on the tire, one little tick on the rim. Take it over here, let the air out. Now, how do we do that? Very simple. We let the air out, we bring it back over here, we chuck it up. We got the valve core in our pocket, we break the beads, and then we use both rollers to come down after we got the beads broke and pinch the tire, hold it, and rotate the rim inside the tire. Again, you're not touching it. You're not doing a whole hell of a lot of work doing this. Okay? So we rotate it around to the lines meet. We release everything. We seat the bead. We bring it back over here to the machine. It goes to back to balance. Of course. Again, guys, don't be that guy that yeah, decides he's going to do force <laughs> match and go launch. Because somebody is going to have come back and balance the tire while you're gone, and you have lost your entire force match uh, sequence. 
you've got to start completely over. Don't do that. Do the set. Okay, so we're gonna it wants that point seven five there. We're gonna put it here. We're gonna go to the double weight. So one point seven five there. We'll put the weight on and move on down the road. Everybody with me on that? That that's getting into balance and tires that we really don't need to talk about, other than don't beat on a balancer to the beat of the music that's in your ear. Make sense? Okay? <laughs> Cleanliness. Y'all are pretty good about it out here. These balancers have three legs. They've got one here, one here, excuse me, one here, one here, and one here. On the bottom, obviously. Then there's a kickstand on the back side. That kickstand is not on the floor. It is about a quarter of an inch off the floor. Do not help me and loosen the bolts and put that kickstand on the floor. It is not supposed to touch the floor. It, that makes a poor contact point and we don't need four. Okay? So, with that said, when we take the weights off of them, we should be taking the weights off over here before we mount and balance them. I mount them over here. But a lot of times we don't. We bring them over here and then we don't take the weights off until we get it chucked up. And then we scrape the weights off and it hits right here, it hits the toe of my boot, goes right underneath the machine. And then we get down on our hands and knees with our magnet and dig them out, right? Yeah, see, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's peeking out a little bit. Let me go ahead and kick it all the way up. Yeah. yeah. Guys, what happens there? That young lady right there is the most expensive window washer and trash picker upper in, in Houston County. She gets the same $145 to walk in the door and the same $155 an hour to clean up weights. I sit in the truck and write the invoice. And she, goes, she gets in the truck and goes, do you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep it clean. If weights get underneath there, I get it. But about once a week, I would say, and you might be able to build. Yeah, I know you can build them a hook. Just have a piece of slicker off, something with a bend in it, where you can reach underneath there and grab all that crap and pull it out from underneath the balance. Okay. Because what happens is when I get a pile of debris underneath the balancer or a ton of debris in the sled of the, of the wheel lift. It creates a poor contact point to the ground, and it's not vibrating like it should. So it, there again, it'll start chasing weights. What it'll do is once it, I, have, I found screwdrivers, big old fat Phillips head screwdriver handles underneath these, and when you walk up to the balancer with no wheel on it, you can grab the spindle and pick it up, the whole balancer does this, because it's, mm -hmm. it's wobbling mm -hmm. back and forth on top of it. It's, it's never gonna balance the tire though, okay? If you get that, Check the balancer, make sure it's steady. So before you call me and tell me it's chasing weights, let's make sure we don't have a bunch of debris on it. That's my whole point, getting to that. Don't beat on it, clean it up. Fair enough? Any questions? Everybody knows how to put weights on them, so I'm not gonna put the weights on Do y'all wanna do this this tire to see how the straight side works, okay? Double tap the pedal and unscrews itself? Yeah. Nice. You have to beat on it. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> it wasn't me. I saw someone. Sam. There we go. Now, safety deal. If you do forget that the wheel lift is up and you try to lower that hood and spin the tire, what's going to happen? Lowers automatically. The wheel lift's going to go down. What's going to happen? It's got a sensor in it. It realizes you lowered the hood. It says, "Whoa, lower the lower the wheel lift." So it it, it will not it will not stay up. Okay? Nice. So, so you don't have to worry nice. about that. But using the wheel lift <laughs> as a stop to help doesn't look good. Sweet. <laughs> of course. It's, it's got weights. <laughs> I'm not gonna clean off the uh, okay. double sided tape. Speaking of. We're not speaking of, we're going to talk about it. Red collet, red spacer, every time. Remember that. Why? Because it just so happens this red collet is the exact same size as the hole in this spindle. And there's a snap ring inside there. It is the exact same width as the groove inside of this collet. That one does make me good money because it takes about two hours to get it off there. Red collet. Now, Hunter has changed this spindle out supposedly. I haven't had to pull one off in a couple of years now. It got stuck back in there. But I still tell people, 
red to red. I used to put a piece of red electrical tape beside it. Hunter actually decided to change because that used to be a yellow color. Now it's red. I guess they got tired of seeing red electrical tape stuck on the outside of the weight train. But anyway, just remember that. What is this for? Anybody know? It's to keep it, to keep this color sticking, right? Okay, what is it actually for on large assemblies like that? This housing has got a spring in it. This silver cover over here, uh, eventually I will get one of you to call me and go, hey, that silver cover has moved to one side. The gap is not stained. I, I don't care. All that is is a spring cover. That's all that is. It can move around all it wants to. The spring behind that, when I put this on it, when I put this on, that's nice. I had it in this hand and the raised it in this hand, right? When I put this on here, behind the collar, what am I doing when I crank that butterfly down? I'm compressing that spring a half inch further. Therefore, I'm putting more pressure on the assembly to hold it steady. Because what will happen, have you ever balanced a tire and you know in your mind you got it tight? You spin that tire up, comes around, you put weights on it, the spindle is threaded, everything is, is correct, but yet it chases weights. I don't have three underneath it. I have nothing going on, and they call me, and it's chasing weights, and I come out, and I put it in the assembly on it, spin it a dozen times, and it gives me the exact same weight every time. What happened more than likely was you didn't have the butterfly crank down. You weren't running road force. You didn't have the butterfly quite tight enough, and the assembly on the, the rotation of that spindle is rotating 300 RPMs, and the DC drive sends a, a signal to the spindle to stop, and it stops. Well, what happens with centrifugal force? The rim keeps moving. So where it wanted the weight was here, but yet it slipped on the spindle, so now it's here, that far away from where it actually wanted the weight. And that will cause it to chase weight. You get that situation again, if you think you do, take it off, to unchuck it, put it all back together, make sure everything's tightened back down, and spin it again, see if it does it again. Oz is good, it won't. He did slip. Now, this balancer will also tell you slippage detected. If it moves too far, balancer will go, no, start over. It's that smart because we're using those cameras to profile. It sees that that rim, the spindle was here spinning, and the rim should be spinning at the exact same RPM, but yet one of them is moving faster than the other. Hang on, gonna give you there. Okay. Make sense? The lasers in this hammerhead are gonna show you where to put the clip weights across the top. You're going to eventually figure out those are on spring bolts. Don't be that guy that runs by and just slap that thing bitch just to watch it do this. And again, we will not name this kind of tire that. I've actually had these broken completely off of the machine because they throw tires from the mezzanine down and hit the hit it and then go, I don't know what happened. It's broke, I can tell you what happened. You threw a tire from up there <laughs> to prevent yeah, right. the attempt at scratching the face of the customer's wheel. But we do have a rubber ring on that gun and it says aluminum wheels only on it. Therefore, if we're doing a steel, take the rubber cup off, okay? And that's the only thing we use for the fire wheel. <laughs> <laughs> he shouldn't have beat it on there with the hammer. <laughs> What's this supposed to have me? 35? 32. Well, we run it down to 31 and then back up to 32. Okay, so everybody sees what it does. You set, set the PSI with the blue arrows. It tells you when it gets there. It'll take it out too. If you've got too much in. So if you end up having to put you know, nice. 40 pounds of air over here to get the beast to see, don't worry about trying to get it back down. Bring it over here, set it where you need to be, and the machine's moving stuff. You still got that over? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Let's see. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, here we go. Whoa. What did I say? I'll stop. 
It's, it does, because that's all y'all can see. It says, possible wheel centering problem or bent wheel detected. Perform centering, centering check to investigate further. So I'm going to hit perform centering check. Mount assembly on balancer. This is the part where our TFS comes into play. Does everybody remember what that stands for? Read the fucking screen. RTFS. Got me? Okay. Mount assembly on balancer. Position ballast in at 12 o'clock. So that is going to, oh, 12 o'clock right there. Oh, I need to, we have not adjusted that, by the way, so I'm going to eyeball this. That red line would normally be 12 o'clock, but I forgot to adjust your hammerhead before we started this. I will do that before I go. So the red line is where you would normally put the valve stem. We haven't adjusted it, so I'm eyeballing it at 12 o'clock. Get your valve stem. It, it, we are skipping a step with the new balancer because it's already done a centering check per se when it's spun it the first time. So now I'm going to rotate the rim on the collet, relocating two surfaces. Oh. Go back to 12 o'clock. Do we know if this rim is bent? It sees the tape residue from the old weights. Mm -hmm. it, it, it pulled up and said, I, I see debris. It sees that tape from the residue from the old weights. Okay, so that ain't not, not achievable. What am I going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty close. I have either a tire or a rim problem at this point. We're going to cancel it. We're going to see if I can get by. Probably not. Okay, you'll hear it come down, and then you'll hear it go. And back off. If you're watching, you'll see it back off. What it's doing when it comes down and puts the weight on it, it's spinning one direction. We're looking for the high spot in the egg of the rim. When we back off, we're looking for the high spot in the egg of the tire. So now I know where they are. That's how I can tell you where to put the two marks on the tire. So a quarter of an ounce TDC right here is what, what, what I need, even though it knows there's a problem with this rim. That quarter of an ounce is going to balance it. Is this rim still going to have a problem? I've only got eight pounds of road force on this rim. So what it saw was the potential that maybe somebody has curb checked this inside or outside, and it saw an imperfection in the rim, and it's just letting you know, hey, I see something that isn't normal here. So I can still balance this and get eight pounds of road force out of it. That rim will still roll smooth. I'll keep that in mind. Do not clean my cameras for me. No, just like those, don't clean them. They are well back inside of the housing in there. Um, every now and then, if you start getting issues, you might take your pen light and shine it here and inside this one here just to see if our little creepy crawly friends, our little eight-legged friends, have crawled up in there and made a web. Same thing up here. It does the same thing. When you shine light through a spider web, it goes 15 different directions. Um, instead of the one laser like it's supposed to be. So if you get a big issue with changing weight, and it'll tell you, it'll start giving you errors. Hey, something's not right. Just take your pen light again before you call me. Take your pen light, shine it in there. If there's a spider web in there, go find you a Q-tip. Just get the spider web out. Do the bottom side as well and start over. Okay, let's talk about calibration. Everybody good with what this? Everybody good with how to change past your car, the SUV, the truck? I can either do it here, change limits, they're all right there. So why do that? They're all over here now on the front, on the front screen. Okay, easy enough. Okay, uh, what else? Smart weight. Is there any reason to ever turn smart weight off? No. Nope. Shake your head no. No. I get old gray head same inches like myself. Will argue with me from time to time. Well, if I'm doing a trailer. There's no reason for me to worry about that. 
So if you're doing my trailer, I want everything done properly. Because if you've ever been dragging a 20 foot flatbed trailer with nothing on it, and you look back there and that some bitch is doing this going down the road, the tires are not balanced properly on them, okay? There's no reason to turn a smart weight off. Absolutely not. Let me back up. There is one reason. And y'all have it here. This is the first time I've ever been able to actually use this. Straight from slicks. You're going to put the weight on this. The extra weight on this. Okay. Because all that is doing is saving, saving the company money by not putting an extra half ounce here or there on, on those racing slicks. Put them on. Okay. So you can turn smart weight off and let it put the extra weight there on. You're not going to hurt that vehicle. We're not trying to make that vehicle lighter. Okay. That, that half an ounce isn't going to gain you a tenth of a second down that track. Mm -hmm. okay? But it will give it better balance down that track and hopefully hang up into the tire better and not allow that vibration as you come off the line, hit it down, hit it down the line, right? Any questions with that? That's enough. Shut up, old man. Go home.